Guy, your main pastor, Pastor Taz. The head pastor here at the House of Your Shadow. First of all, guys, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being out there. We uh, uh, hope you are enjoying your midweek. Uh, they call it Hump Day. We hope that uh, you had a glorious Memorial Day. Those that was uh, uh, celebrated. We celebrated our fallen soldiers and, and our soldiers today, and, and as well as family members. We just thank God for you, and God bless you. Let's talk about, um, you know, we're still on the sixth topic. Hey, man, still on the sixth topic. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth. I, I was really hoping that we'd get more responsive questions. I don't know why people are scared or, or really don't care, you know, about um, God's sexuality. I said like that. I mean, how many know some things about God's sexuality? Amen. So, um, sex is a, a major part of our lives. And of course, uh, I grew up in church all my life. I don't know about you, but we never talked about it in a way. They told us not to fornicate, they told us we were going to hell. Uh, that was about it, you know? And so everything else, um, I don't know about you, I came up in a home that we it wasn't discussed much. So everything I learned about sexuality and sex itself, I learned in the street or through my friends. And as I got older, uh, we kind of learned from one, one another, our partners. Amen? So I just wanted to stretch that out there. We're still open. If you have any questions, we talked about homosexuality, we talked about uh, trans, transgenderism, uh, whatever it may be, uh, concerning your sex. We do understand that one thing God showed me is that we're all going to be judged according to sexual uh, sexual immorality. Amen? So it makes no difference what type of sexual sin or, 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 or sexual event it is or sex it is, it's still all the same in God's eyes if it's sexual immorality. And he says, I'm going to judge it all the same. Amen? Now, um, how to love yourself. I want to get into that for a moment. Uh, I used to have a saying, the Bible says, love thy neighbor as you love thyself. That's, that's the correct way to put it. Uh, matter of fact, look that up for me, Brother CJ. Uh, love thy neighbor as I love thyself. That, that, is that the second greatest commandment? Or is that, yeah, sir. That thing, I think it is. But we're going to get the problem. Get the, I don't want to misquote it. We have a problem in the body of Christ uh, misquoting the scriptures. Uh, I, I know I get on a lot of people's nerves. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was talking to a young lady uh, last week, and she says that, you know, God said that he'll give me the desires of my heart. Well, you have to understand, let's finish that first, okay? Listen carefully. He says, yes, he said he give me the desires of the heart, but the, but the first part of that scripture says, delight yourself in him. Preach, pastor. See, we don't want to hear that. Delight yourself in him. Because, see, that word delight means indulge. That means that means just give yourself to. You understand? So if you give yourself to him, you're not going to have the desires of your heart. Your desires are going to line up with whose? His heart. So that's the reason he said he'll only, this is what saying, he'll only give you desires of your heart if your desires line up with his desires of, your, of his heart for your life. Man. Not just going to give you anything. I, hey, I desire a bending right now. I desire it, but is God going to give me one that I desire of Bentley, knowing that I probably can't afford it, knowing that I don't need it, knowing that it's it, 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 it unnecessary? No, he's not going to do me like that. But I can keep on wanting, amen, keep on confessing, amen, and guess what? He'll teach me a lesson and give it to me one day. But once again, the repo man probably comes shortly after that. <laughs> Glory be to God. But then we don't want to blame God. What happened? What happened? Well, you have a desire in your heart. It wasn't his. Amen. Yeah. Read. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 38. This is the first and great commandment. 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hey. Second great commandment. Thou shalt. We'll, we'll, we'll put that as the, the top scripture. Okay. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thou love thyself. Okay. Now. I used to have a problem with that scripture because a lot of us don't know how to love ourselves. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You know, if you smoke cigarettes on a daily basis, don't love me like that. <laughs> if you if you are a weed head, don't love me like that. Come on, somebody. If you are a sexual uh, promiscuous person. Don't love me like that. You know, I mean, I mean, 
The Bible said, love thy neighbor, I love thyself. So, uh, you know, it, it, who, so, so it makes sense, brother. See, they take it out. Why do we get mad at people when they love us the way they love themselves? Hmm. Huh? They're just, they're just being obedient to the word of God. Think about it. If you do yourself bad, mm -hmm. don't get mad at me. If, 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 I, if I do you bad, come on now. Think about it. If someone does themselves bad, we can't get mad at them. They do us bad, can we? Right. They're just being obedient. They're loving us the way they love themselves. Right. They don't care about their own well-being, so they're not going to care about yours. <laughs> Preach, Pastor. That's a revelation. Think about it. That's what I don't want. I want you to love me the way you love you. Mm -mm. Don't don't love me the way you love you. You know you don't love you that. But I love me. And I can show me because guess what? Number one, I want, I want to be in good health. Amen? I want to live a long, prosperous life. And, and, and if there's anything to hinder that in my, in, my, in my life, then I don't want it, including you. Free pastor. Yeah, hey, 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 if you don't want what I want, I want a long, prosperous life. So you can't sit up there and smoke cigarettes every day and say you want a long, prosperous life. <laughs> At the end of the day, and yeah, you know, I know you probably said some of y'all folks right now. My grandma was smoking cigarettes if he was eighty five. My dad was smoking cigarettes; he was sixty one. I'm like, okay. One thing I learned, and I felt that same way. My grandmother smoked cigarettes till she was seventy nine. Seventy nine years old, smoked cigarettes. And I said, Lord, that's a long time to live. Huh? So I was like, Why do we pressure people? And to stop smoking cigarettes when they live to be 80 years old. And I said, that's pretty good to me. Hey, let them smoke on. But then the Holy Ghost asked me, how old would she have died if she had not smoked cigarettes? Mm. So your father died smoking cigarettes at 85. Who's to say? Because he probably made 90. Come on, somebody. If your grandmother stopped smoking cigarettes at 90, guess what? She probably gonna live to be 100. <laughs> at the end of the day, it still shortens your life. No matter how you look at it. And I'm using that because this is the way we think of ourselves. And we love others the same way and in the same manner. Don't love me like you love you if you're not loving yourself like God. Teach your mom right there. Don't love me like you love you if you're not loving yourself like God. Pastor, I, 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 I have to love yourself. I know we don't even hear a we'll message about this, dude. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Turn to me in the first scripture. I'm going biblical, saints. I'm going biblical. Mm -hmm. I got about five or six scriptures biblical, and I'm done. Proverbs 19 and 8. Proverbs 19 and 8. How to love yourself. Proverbs 19.80. And the Bible says, He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. That's why the Bible says, He that Get wisdom, loveth his own soul. You love yourself when you seek wisdom and godly counsel. Yeah. Have you ever heard somebody, even men and women in the church, that don't listen to nobody? Can't tell them nothing? Well, that's a sign that you don't love yourself that in, in, in a godly way. Come on, somebody. It's like the thing, how can I love myself? Guess what? Get some wisdom. You should always seek wisdom in all you do. And you just can't do that sometimes by getting on your knees. Sometimes you too, sometimes we're so clogged up with, with the things of the world that God can't even get to us and speak to us. So, so in order to make sure that we're hearing from the Lord, go find some godly counsel. Get someone that you know that has wisdom in the, in the body of Christ. And ask them, feed off of them. 
uh, uh, prophetess um, Laverne Hankins, my aunt. She just passed a few months ago. God bless her. She was the prophet of my house. She was the prophet of this church. And whenever I wanted wisdom or whenever I was in her presence, I would ask her for a word from the Lord. And whatever she said, it was right on the money or I would go do. Guess what? I'm a man of God, too. I hear from the Lord, too. But what's wrong with me humbling myself and asking someone else for some more wisdom? I don't know about you, but I can't get enough wisdom. And I want all I can get, especially all that is from the Lord. Amen? So how do you love yourself, number one? Get some wisdom. Continue to grow in wisdom. And then the Bible says, if you get the wisdom, keep it understanding. See, when you, the Bible says, uh, and all you're getting what? Get understanding. Well, guess what? That's the only way you'll get understanding if you continue to keep your wisdom. Go on, somebody. Number two, Leviticus 19 and 18. Number two, Leviticus 19 and 18. And the Bible says, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Okay, now, you got to, of course, in this passage, God said, do not avenge yourself. I'll do it. Now, this is so easy to do. Don't, okay, don't try to punish people on your own. If you're going to leave it in God's hands, leave it in God's hands. In other words, when you see them, don't roll your eyes. If you see them, don't not speak to them. If you see them, don't go the other way. Don't be rude. Don't be unjust. Don't be unkind. Because, see, if you love yourself, then you'll love them too. That's what Jesus said. That's what the Bible says, sorry. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. He says, thou shalt not avenge, nor bear a grudge against the children of thy people. God said, you should, hey, do not hold a grudge against them. Don't avenge them. <laughs> if you believe the scripture, vengeance belongs to the Lord, that's true. You should have mercy on them. Because guess what? God's going to get them. When you do something to me and I don't have to fight and I, and I know that you're screwed up, you know what I say? Lord, have mercy on them. Because he's going to get them. He's going to punish them. And what I'm doing is I think about myself. Come on. Because since I love myself, I got to love them too. Man. Number three, I got to cross that, but let's read it. Proverbs 18 and 12. I know we just left it. Sorry. Why are you here? Proverbs 18 and 12. And the Bible says, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. I guess that's really not because it didn't say love, but, but it goes into sequence. Before destruction, the heart of man is haunted. And before honor is humility. In other words, just like God says, don't hold a grudge. Don't get beside yourself, especially when you're supposed to be operating out of love. It's so easy. We get all high and mighty. That's a sign that destruction. There's nothing good's gonna come out of this situation. As long as you're in your soapbox. The Bible says honor. See, when you when you love one another and you love your enemy, that means you honor them. And then guess what? That's your humility. Honor is before honor is humility. So you have to humble yourself. How, how many of you know it makes no difference who honor you or your mercy? 
As long as you're honored in heaven, glory be to God. That's so that's so wise because see, Jesus never did worry about man's accommodations or man's uh 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 how should I put it, uh, recommendations. He always focused on it was heaven. See, he came down here to, to, to represent heaven. He says, if it's not like heaven, then he's gonna make it like it is heaven in here on earth. So he didn't, he wasn't concerned about how the world feels about him. That was none of his concern. So neither should it be yours. Humble yourself. Walk away. The same way God loves you, you got to love your enemies. Man. I say it to people all the time. I don't like to destroy relationships. I like to build relationships. And the Bible says, how you do that? The Bible says love covers a what? Multitude of sin. First John. 419. 1 John 4 19. 1 John 4 19. And the Bible says, We love him because he what? First love us. He, we love him because he first loved us. God so loved the world that he gave him what? Only begotten son. Time after time, we can stand on that scripture alone. Because I don't know too many people that love Taz so much that they give up the children for me. Preach, Pastor. I don't know too many. I've never ever had anybody say, you know what, Taz, I love you so much. I'm gonna give him my child for you. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on my child die. My child's gonna die, and you gonna leave. No one has ever done that for me. I don't know about you. So that's the proof in itself. That's the reason the Bible says He loves. We love Him because He first loved us. He loved me first. So when anybody loves you like that. You got to love them back. <laughs> Glory. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I understand my heavenly father loves me in that manner and he loves you too. No matter who you are. He loves you in the same way. You just got to know it. Believe it. Put your life on it. He does. He loves you that much. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done. He loves you that much. That he gave his only begotten son. Now, knowing that, all he expects is you to love him back. We said in John, right? Go to John, 1 John 18 and 19. I'm sorry. Oh, verse, verse 18 19. Let's go to verse 18. I'm sorry. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I love that, but people don't like this scripture. This is what the Bible just said. He that feareth is not made perfect in love because fear hath torment. Guess what? Love is not torment. That's the reason we're, we're, I stopped saying tough love a long time ago. You know, there's no such thing as tough love. Because we use the word tough love, meaning that this kind of love is going to hurt. Love don't hurt at all. So you can't say uh, that that's tough love, this love is going to hurt because that's fear. Fear equates to torment. In other words, saints, let's not be afraid to love one another. Amen. Amen. If, if, if you are afraid to love someone, 
that means you're not loving yourself properly. Hello, somebody. You can't do anything to me that God would allow you to do. And, and if you did it, that means he allowed it. He allowed for you to do it. And so I'm, I know that if he allowed you to do it, that means there's a purpose and a reason behind it. I mean, I know it now. I mean, I know it later. But I will find out. And guess what? It's all going to be up to his what? Glory. Lord, thank God you can use me for your glory. I don't, know about you. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just glad to be you. Thank God. Think about it, saints. Fear. And I can break it all the way down. If someone is afraid of spiders, you're missing some love. Oh, boy, that's so good. I didn't say you love and you don't love because we're talking about what? Perfect. That word perfect means whole. Complete. <laughs> and some of us are tormented because lack of love. Think about it. Some of us got mamas that love them and showed them that they love them their entire life, but they still have issues because they don't have the love of the father. You get what I'm saying? So you can have love. You can operate out of love. But you can still lack some love. You does some love missing in your life, which means that's the reason you don't have perfect love. How many of those? How many? How you? How many met people that just uh, it takes a while to love them? It's hard to love them. And how many met those people that, that, that it's hard for them to love you, even though you love them all day long, you can show them all day long. But guess what? They still don't believe you, or it's just hard for them to believe that you love them that much. And they'll screw up so much just to get you. Mm -hmm. To not love me then, so they can say those words. I know you didn't love me. Don't nobody love me. It's always the same thing. I got to be in my life like that, but guess what? I told them, I don't care what they do or what they say, I'm gonna love them anyway. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna love you to life. As my cousin taught me, we're gonna love you, and not a thing you can do about it. You can't stop me from loving you. You know why? Cause that's what God says about us. We disobey him, we still love us. We curse him, we still he still love us. We turn our back on him, we still love us. Thank you, Jesus. Disobedient, still love us. Because he made up in his mind. Not because of what I've done, not because of who I am. He made up in his mind. He said, I'm gonna love you. He said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. He said, I'm always here. Knock and the door shall open. Seeking you shall find. This is the promises. Not that he only gave it to us, but he gave it to us for himself. Come on, somebody. That's when I leave Romans 12 and 10. Romans 12 and 10. Are you getting this? Romans 12. Verse 10, and the Bible says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Basically, love one another. And that's the reason the Bible says, In honor, preferring one another. That means, remember, you talk, you talk about honor and thumbs. After humility, no matter what a person's done, no matter who we are, sometimes you have to humble yourself to love someone. Mm -hmm. Because some people may not feel worthy of love, may not even be worthy of love. But when you look in the mirror, you weren't either. Mm -hmm. But he loved you. Mm -hmm. And he still loved you. So as long as God is loving us, thank God for loving you. After hearing this message tonight, go to work. Love that co-worker. Love your boss. Love your supervisor. Love your job. Love your spouse. Love your love your, love your that, 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 that kin that kin that person's kin to you that you don't too much get along with. Don't see eye to eye. 
to the person that's done you wrong, love them. There's no love like the love of God. Because the reason they have problems loving themselves because no one has showed them the love of God. And you might be the one that God has placed in their lives to change that. And to help you get by, but help me get by, I don't look at how much love they deserve. I look at how much God loves them. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for loving us, not because we loved you or we done anything, but you loved us first. And because you loved us first, we love you, Father. Not only because of what you've done, but guess what? Who you are. You are Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the Prince of Peace, the Waymaker, they say. You have many different names, all that are good, according to your word, Father. We thank you. Lord, I pray right now for those that has problems loving themselves. Lord, teach them how to love themselves. Teach them how to love them in your sight, in your way, Father. I don't want to love me the way I want to love them. I want to love me the way you love me, Father. According to you, your will and your way. Teach us, God. Holy Spirit, be with us. That person that's loving themselves improperly with drugs and alcohol. Do away with it right now. All the assignment that the enemy has for that individual, God, we ask that you cast it back to the sea of hell where it belongs. And we ask that you regurgitate the love that you've instilled inside of them since they were on this earth. Prove to them, God, that they're loved in this world. Not only just by their mother and father, but they got loved ones all around them. They just didn't know it. But now they know how to love us. Let's love one another as we love each other back, Father. In the name of Jesus, as we love you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once again, I'm your guy, Pastor Taz. We thank you. Once again, we hey, a question still open. Ask a new question concerning the word. It's in the word of God. I could say concerning, but life, our life today is in the word of God. Guess what? Your situation is in the word of God. The way your child is getting on your nerves is in the word of God. The way your boss is acting up is in the word of God. The way your bank account looks is in the word of God. <laughs> Amen. It's in his word. Let us teach you, lead you in God. In his word. It's not our opinion. It's not what we think. This is not a cult. This is not a religion that we made up. This is strictly the word of God. And that's what we live by. Through the power of understand. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm. On that note, it's the giving church. We give. If you're learning something, you're feeling something, you're feeding from this. Give. Dollar sign cash out his church. H E S C H U R C H his church, the number two. His church, the number two. Cash out. Dollar sign his church, the number two. Feel free to give. We give to the poor, feed the hungry on a regular basis. Many different things come in. We want you to be a part of it. You can point and say, hey, yeah, hey, I'm investing in that. I did that. Yes, you did. And glory be to God for you. And we pray that God return to you one thousand fold. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Once again, feel free to join us every Wednesday, 7 p.m., Sunday morning worship service, 10 a.m. As we worship the word of God, receive a word from the Lord, and be on your merry little way. Once again, we still travel. We'll come to your backyard. We'll be in your streets. Amen. Look out for I'm your guy, Pastor Taz. Have a blessed work, work week, rest of the work week. Have a lovely weekend. We can't wait to see you on Sunday. God bless you.